and welcome everyone. Uh, glad you're here today. This is a great venue to be able to hop on a little Zoom call uh, with an uh, with a intimate conversation about what's going on here at HB. And I'm so glad uh, you all can join. Uh, and I know that many people watch this after it's recorded, uh, which is just great. And we are so proud of everything that's going on here, but specifically uh, in athletics. Uh, I am so grateful for Stacey Aroni's leadership. Uh, Stacey's been at HB for eight years and just has at every moment risen to the next leadership moment. Uh, last year, we did a national search, hired a headhunting firm, and of course, what we found is homegrown leadership at HB, uh, specifically powerful women, uh, seems to um, be the perfect fit for who we are. And we're just so grateful, uh, Stacy, for all you do. And Stacy's worked so hard to create a vision uh, and upgrading athletics and her voice and her presence has really made an indelible mark here. And so um, the conversation today is with Stacy and I. We're gonna talk for about I don't know, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes. And then we'd love to open it up to questions or things on folks' mind, uh, memories you might have or things you really hope for. So again, welcome everyone. And uh, we're gonna start. So uh, I don't know, uh, Tina, if you can kind of put us on spotlight, that might be helpful. So it looks more like a conversation with um, with Stacy and I, but that might be helpful. So. So Stacy, I would just love to, for you to tell everyone, gosh, that you know, athletics is such a huge integral part of the HB experience. Um, you know, it offers opportunities for leadership and you know, sisterhood, wellness, you know, uh, personal growth, understanding of teamwork. Um, how do you see from your vantage point, knowing what you know about all the different sports we have? Um, you know, what, are, what are, is, is that happening in, in the development of girls today? And maybe you could just give us a brief, how many sports do we have? Uh, and how, and how are we doing this magic? Great. Well, thank you, Fran. And I'm happy to be here with all of you today. Um, I'll start by saying we now have 12 varsity sports. We've added gymnastics this winter season. So our gymnastics um, team is only one deep. However, we're excited mm -hmm. to be able to offer that opportunity um, for the student that approached us about uh, adding that as a sport and getting the school sponsorship on that. So we're going through that process at the moment just to make sure that we can continue to support that, but we're excited to add that this year. But ultimately for athletics, it's really for us in this department, it's an expansion of the classroom. So we're taking everything that at all uh, levels, prime, middle, and upper, we are taking everything that are the core values of each division and really incorporating that into all of our athletic programs when we are talking about developmentals, middle school, or at the upper school level. So um, specifically at the upper school level, we now have several opportunities for student athletes via the student athlete leadership team, which is known as SALT here, um, along with, of course, being captain, or this year we've added student workers at all athletic events. So we have had quite a few students who have volunteered to learn the scoreboard, learn the rules, be announcers, um, and really just kind of going from there. Um, I disappeared. You did disappear. There you are. Okay, hi. <laughs> um, but ultimately, our, our goal is really to provide opportunities for student athletes and really um, get the community involved. That was the biggest feedback that I had received from all the student athletes is they felt like athletics was kind of siloed over in the corner. So how can we involve athletics school wide? Um, and that's SALT's biggest challenge right now. And they have some projects in the works, such as Prime Nights and things like that, which helps the girls understand kind of what goes into planning all of these events as well. Um, specifically this year as part of the athletic vision, we're also really working on um, strength, speed and conditioning by hiring that part-time staff member um, to really focus and go in with all of the upper school sports at every level. And then really now we are starting to work with all the middle school sports as well to lay the foundation. Um, and that will really just help us prevent injury, um, increase strength, and we are also having that strength, speed, and conditioning coach help us in the physical education department to do some basic body mobility work um, with some body bars and some PVC piping as well. You know, it's so empowering to walk by the, uh, 
the, the uh, uh, strength and conditioning room, the weight room, and see the girls, you know, getting just um, coached on how to use this and how to use it for their body, for their kind of strength. And, you know, what, what is the way you can do it for your sport too? Um, and, you know, Stacey, I really liked that SALT, so that student athletic leadership uh, group, uh, helped interview athletic director candidates. So it's not just about what's going on on the field. It's also real moments of, hey, if you're going to interview somebody, that's a lifelong skill to be interviewed and to interview too. So you've done, I mean, I think in some ways expanded those opportunities, in, which has been tremendous. Um, and you've used all those groups and also parents to really build a visionary leadership or vision for athletics, you know, sustaining that culture of coaching excellence, which has changed a bit because of youth sports. You now have so many uh, gone are the days of the teacher coach model, you know, it's um, and we have now much many more club sports. Um, how are you doing that today at HB, getting that coaching excellence uh, to be consistent and uh, to be really truly a blazer uh, inspired excellence? Well, when I was appointed to this position, my first stop was really with all of the coaches. Um, I wanted to get their feedback. They're the ones that are in the day to day on the ground with the students. Um, it's my job to be able to help support them. Um, so with that, really just getting the coaches on the same page and getting everyone um, actually contributed to the athletic vision. So that way it provides a lot of buy-in. Um, so frequent communication with the coaches, making sure we're on track, even just a quick text message, just asking if they need something has always been helpful. Um, and really my team, myself and our two assistant athletic directors, Kelly and Mitch, we have not segregated out who's doing developmental, who's doing middle school, who's doing upper school. All of us have a piece in all of it. So that way, um, you know, all the coaches know each other. So the head coach of the program at the upper school level now is interacting with the developmental coaches. So we can create a program that starts from the bottom and works all the way up. And that's really so that vertical ahead. integration yes. of everything. Yes. Yeah. And we also really are starting to put coaches ideas in action. So for example, for volleyball this year, first time head coach for us, um, Mike Maurer, had a bunch of ideas that he wanted to try out and we, we went for it and they were successful. So I think having the coaches have a little bit of accountability, a little bit of skin in the game has really helped. And as you mentioned, Fran, the teacher coach model is diminishing with the demand that's on teachers, um, really focusing on making sure that we are pulling outside coaches in to connect them to the community and understand the academic rigor and kind of the culture that's here at HB. So that way they can be supportive of our student athletes. Yeah, I remember one year you actually had coaches, new coaches follow students around so they could understand the stresses of the scholar athlete especially in high school. Um, and I thought that was really a, a great way to build a rapport and to, to make sure that there was a, an integrated model or an integrated understanding of what's going on at school and on the fields or on the courts somewhere. Um, that's terrific. Uh, so many of those great coaches are, have been here a while. And you know, uh, one of the things you did too, and, and, uh, and certainly the advancement office did was to honor coaching uh, as an endowed chair award, which really we have a few endowed chairs which honor excellence in teaching. Um, and we wanted to honor excellence in coaching and to have that be equally valued. And so that's a new, relatively new award that I think is really made, um, uh, you know, an important piece of, uh, hey, it's coaching or teaching, we're all on the same team, helping these girls become the best version of themselves, right? So that's great. Uh, and I know on that listening tour, one of the things you heard from parents and from students was how do we become better, more savvy at marketing our athletic achievement? Um, and, you know, you had a lot of great, what are you excited about on that front when you see, you know, how we're going to uh, go to the next level with marketing? Sure. So a lot of the feedback that I received was that 
you know, you look at newspapers like the News Herald, the local uh, paper, along with the Plain Dealer, and we are one of the only independent schools that is not included in the News Herald's coverage area. So um, obviously, you know, our girls aren't highlighted as much as some of the other independent schools. The Plain Dealer has increased their coverage this year, um, which I think is fantastic. Um, because for a while, if we didn't have football, you weren't in the coverage area. So that has increased this year, which has been helpful in um, marketing our students. Additionally, we are currently in a build for a new athletics website that will be hooked into the school's website. Um, Yay. Yes. So this athletic website is actually um, the company that runs it is VNN. It, this company, it was actually built by athletic directors. So this is a very athletic focused website and it works for athletics. Um, so it'll be easier to find schedules, scores. There's an ability for us to put blog like updates up to be able to highlight. And it also connects all our social media channels as well. Um, with that, we've partnered with the communication department in making sure that our student athletes are highlighted as appropriate when we're talking about, um, you know, on Twitter, Instagram, any state runs or big awards, we're making sure that we're communicating on those and sharing that with the community as well. Um, we have a really high traction on Instagram. Our Twitter doesn't have a lot of, a lot of traction, but we are posting there as well. Yeah. And I know that you you helped, especially when that pandemic hit, that to stream games of all sorts. And so that that will also be a great way. You know, we've heard a lot from grandparents who just love yes. it, right? They go, they go, the snowbirds maybe go to Florida or they live somewhere else and they can still watch grandchildren play, which is uh, which is terrific. Um, and that's really kind of thinking of holistically about, hey, getting that opportunity, uh, to see your child or or your grandchild or to you know to to market is also part of the facilities um, and we've just had a huge renovation um, a, a game changer so to speak no pun intended in an athletic thing right but uh, building uh, the a new uh, turf field the new wolf field next to the Scaravelli Memorial Field next to six spectacular new tennis courts um, I don't think there's another girls school in Cleveland that has the turf fields next to each other at the capacity that we have. I mean, how has that, how has that changed HB? Well, as we know, the student athletes time is so valuable and to be able to have them at on campus for more of our sporting events has been fantastic. It's less time on a school bus. It's more time to be able to interact with your team to get homework done after school before events. Um, and it's really honestly increased the school spirit. We have a lot more um, record numbers of student, students showing up to games. Um, I actually, at the uh, district final volleyball game, the one of the basketball coaches from 2013, when HB won a state championship, came up to me and introduced himself to me and told me that there were more students at that game than were at his state championship game in 2013. Wow. So, that is really a credit to the girls. Um, I feel like there's a lot of student buy-in now in coming to support one another. Not that there wasn't before, but it's starting to be a little contagious. And I think that attributes to being able to have more things here on campus and be involved. Well, I can attest to that. And before I do though, I wanna thank, I know Elizabeth Falco's on this call. She was an uh, integral part of that team with Catherine Levy uh, and Kate Lincoln. Uh, and the alums really rose to the challenge in helping create this momentum for the facilities and this momentum for sisterhood. So that's great. But it is, you can, it is, there is some sort of energy out there that's, that wasn't there before. And certainly as the varsity <clears throat> third and fourth grade field hockey coach, uh, which I was uh, this year, it, to see the little girls look up to the big girls, it didn't matter what sport they were on. Uh, it just, everybody was on one campus doing all these fun things together. It really, it was just something special. I, it ha has really um, just enhanced uh, our whole campus and the whole feeling of, of, uh, of athletics. Um, and so that may be what I was most proud of this past year was coaching third and fourth grade field hockey and trying to figure out how to teach them not to stop playing when the ball hit their foot. Um, one of them was like, but it's against the rules. And I don't want to cheat, Dr. Bissell. And I was like, yeah, well, only if the ref sees, you know, trying to figure out how to explain it all. Um, but it was, uh, those uh, friendships were just amazing to, um, 
to have. Uh, what are you most proud of in uh, thus far in your tenure as athletic director? Well, I think overall in the past, you know, being an interim athletic director during the year of COVID and then kind of in COVID round two, um, I just have to take a step back and make sure that I acknowledge the athletic administration team, Kelly and Mitch, all the physical education uh, coaches and just all of our coaches across the board. Um, in the past year, they have gone with it. They have stepped up to the plate and really helped make the athletic program what it's starting to develop to be. Um, and I couldn't do it without them. So, and also Fran, with the support of you and the upper administration and human resources has been invaluable. So thank you for that. But I think what I am the most proud of is, is seeing the continuous progression of SALT, um, really incorporating the student athlete voice and involvement in what they're doing. It's their experience. The coaches and I are there to really help drive them forward. There's a lot of student athlete buy-in. And as we mentioned before, the school spirit is up. And really, ultimately, we're starting to focus on putting the Blazer Covenant in action. It's not just words on paper. Um, having the Blazer Covenant with the five key points of character, sportsmanship, excellence, teamwork, and perseverance has really um, hit the SALT group hard. And it, in turn, has started to have the captains have some potential, uh, maybe a hard conversation with a teammate. But really, we are developing more of a safe space for all of the student athletes to be able to have their voice contributed. So that's what I would be the most proud of. Yeah, that, that's, um, and for those alum who may be on the call, the Blazer Covenant was written kind of in conjunction with the Board of Trustees, with the student leaders, with the athletic uh, administration and coaches about what are the values we want every HB athlete to experience in their sporting career or in their season. And so there's a consistency to the phil philosophy of athletics um, and each child and parent signs the Blazer Covenant that they too will be a part of this that these are the values uh, uh, that you, you know, transparently commit to and will be held accountable to and will experience. So it's, um, we, you, this kind of came into effect probably three years ago um, and has really helped make more consistent um, experiences across athletics. Um, and it, I think it really also says something when coaches, uh, so, me as a little coach, you know, what does perseverance mean in my third grade and fourth grade field hockey? That conversation's happening while we stretch, as I know the other conversations about perseverance happening with, let's say, the golf team who did a great job this year, too. Um, so I think that that is, uh, that, that's great. I agree with that. That's something I'm proud of as well. Well, we, we open this and we can unpin ourselves perhaps and uh, open this up to everybody's um, conversation or questions or things on your mind. Uh, we'd love for you to put in chat, maybe what sports you played at HB or what your memories are, um, or even to some of the questions on your mind. Um, just grateful that Stacy had this time uh, to give us um, today. I'm back to gallery view so I can see, see everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stacey, how many, how many, while we wait for questions, oh, what is the partici participation rate of HB girls in team sports? Um, good question. I think um, uh, it's different in different divisions and it's different uh, in different seasons. But I think last year, uh, the senior class had, I think over 75% participate in at least one sport. Uh, one or more sport in their career. Um, and some of them, there were probably about 15 kind of three sport athletes. Um, every year we have about, correct me if I'm wrong, Stacey, six or seven, eight uh, students sign um, division one, two, or three um, letters to play sports in college. Actually, this year it's really sweet. It didn't understand, I, I was involved in field hockey, so I'm up on this data. You know, third and fourth grade, we had I had 25 students sign up of, and I think total there might be 35 in the whole class, um, sign up for field hockey, which met once a week. And um, I had some uh, of the uh, injured varsity players, my uh, coach, my co-coaches, 
Um, and that was the highlight of the third. I was not as popular as these girls were for sure. Um, but you've had two field hockey players this season sign in letters of intent with, with colleges. I know of one, but I'm thinking there might be two. Yeah. Oh, two soccer. soccer. Yes. We had two, two soccer, uh, soccer and one field hockey. Well, so, speed, field hockey hasn't signed yet, so it's not the signing period yet. <laughs> so got it. Uh, National Letter of Intent signing day was on uh, the 10th of this month. And so if you are receiving a National Letter of Intent, that means you're receiving financial compensation for athletics. Um, so those two soccer players um, are going to Lafayette and Wake Forest. And Got then we do have a strong conglomerate of student athletes who will be signing in January as well during the second signing period. It's great. Um, so anyway, it's just great to see the range of, of that. Uh, Elizabeth asks, uh, we have a um, gymnastics team. Are there any other sports we're planning to add in the near future? You know, it's so interesting to, to hear it's, it, oftentimes we add sports, not because the adults wanna add sports, but rather truly because the girls want it. Um, we uh, have an ice skating team um, that, that uh, skates at, at um, or at least does one big event uh, in Shaker. And uh, we have girls interested in rock climbing, but I'm not so sure we'll, we'll have a rock climbing team, but that's maybe something that could be out there. Um, Stacy, we had somebody in, in the last couple of years wanted a water ballet. I don't think that flew. Uh, oh, I think synchronized that there's- Synchronized swimming, yes, synchronized swimming. But every year where there's a girl or a group that wants something, but what else have you heard on your, uh, at, on your door, at, uh -huh. <laughs> knocks on your door? At the club level, we are helping support ice skating, equestrian, um, squash. So essentially at the developmental level this year, our goal is to make sure we are offering at least one developmental for every varsity sport that we offer. Um, so, and because we know that, you know, referencing Heather's question, I'll come back to it in full, but um, she asked about squash. We did have a developmental for squash this year, um, this fall, and we plan on having one in the spring as well. Um, and I know Heather, you asked about school squash for HB facilities have been the issue um, at this point, especially uh, with COVID. Um, you know, we were happy to get through a full year of sports last year. And this year we have one foot in normalcy, one foot is still in some COVID protocols. Um, so a lot of facilities are still kind of in the, in the middle about renting spaces as well. But it, it definitely, if there's the interest, we will do everything we can to help support that for the students. And, 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 and vice versa, if there's not interest, you know, I think one of the struggling programs we have right now is softball, and we're trying to inspire that through PE classes and, and other opportunities, but, you know, sports come in and out of, of, um, of fashion and phases, and uh, we really do want to be responsive to the student voice, as you said, uh, Stacy, so eloquently. Other questions? You can also unmute yourself and ask a question if you'd like. <laughs> I, I was furiously chatting and then I, oh, well, Angela, it's okay. you can no, go, go ahead, a answer Angela's question in the chat. Um, most kind of, I also appreciate trainer. How important is the nutrition? Gosh. That's a great question. It's a great question, Angela. I've actually, so our team um, physician, Dr. Briskin, um, we've actually been communicating lately because the individual that we had lined up to do sports nutrition um, for all of the teams this year uh, actually got a promotion at UH, so no longer can assist us. <laughs> so Dr. Briskin is actually on the hunt for a new sports nutritionist um, for us because we know that that is such a big integral part. Um, I am in the lunchroom and see what the girls eat or don't eat. Um, and I think just honestly, education at the student athlete level and especially the parent level is really important um, for how much a student athlete really may need to fuel their body and what would be good choices to have in the house. So that is something that's definitely in progress that we are hoping to try to get that um, sports nutritionist in from UH as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, maybe since you've been here, we've uh, really upped our game in the dining hall uh, mm -hmm. with a food philosophy and a whole lot of uh, uh, incredible thoughtfulness that has gone into why we serve what we serve how that really does help our athletes, but also is pretty focused on a diversity, a diversity of different kinds of foods and different kinds of proteins and different kinds of, of cultural foods at different times of year. Um, you know, we do have um, 
Muslim student athletes who need different kinds of, of, of foods or, or, or who during Ramadan can't eat um, and uh, do have different uh, ways that they dress uh, for practice. And so there is a lot of uh, important thoughtfulness now uh, more than ever that has gone to kind of thinking about uniforms and, and nutrition and, and also culturally how that affects some student athletes and, and in different ways. So um, we're really grateful to have a wonderful DEI person that also does some training with our coaches so that they can also um, have those conversations um, eloquently and be able to um, address those, those pieces of the whole child. It's a good question. Um, I also know that UH has been an incredible partner overall, not just uh, with their resources with nutrition. Uh, Dr. Briskin has helped uh, student athletes. Um, I also know that Connor Whole Health is uh, looking at chiropractic for student athletes. I may have an insider there, um, but there is lots of folks who want to optimize a student athlete, not just health for the moment, but long-term developmental health. Uh, which does go back to that weight training, does go back to nutrition, does go back to all the pieces that are coming together at these important developmental times. And so that's certainly, um, you know, Cleveland Clinic is terrific too. Uh, UH seems to have a, just a, a natural niche uh, with so many of our families and, and specifically with schools. Um, and we've used their help also to make sure we can continue athletics through COVID, which hasn't been easy. Uh, we've done some proactive testing. Uh, we've done some uh, protocol kind of research and um, they've been really um, unbelievable partners uh, helping us at all turns. So I feel gr grateful for living in this kind of medical community that we, we have so many, re so many uh, resources. And I think Sarah, you had asked if a physical therapist ever comes in and works with the physician and the athletic trainer, um, really only if it's recommended. Um, our doctors um, in the area actually have recognized that HB has its own pool. Um, so we actually have a lot of student athletes that are rehabbing in the pool um, as well. So whether it's in the diving well or the shallow end, um, but we haven't had any physical um, representation on campus of a physical therapist. Um, and then Angela, I think you asked about, oh, non-team sports students. So yes, I'm glad you brought this up. So part of the, um, thought for bringing in the strength, speed, and conditioning coach was not only just for weight training, but it's obviously for mobility and flexibility, um, really working on that whole athlete. So what we are having that individual do, Ryan, he is meeting with the physical education team as well, because all freshmen are required to take physical education as part of freshman fitness. And then if you don't play a sport, you um, two seasons of a sport, then you take flex fitness. And so that is kind of that lifelong moment where we have them in the weight room. So even if you're not on a varsity sport team, you can walk into a gym, you can walk in anywhere and feel comfortable that you know how to use equipment, you know how to use free weights, because that can be intimidating for girls. Um, so that that's really kind of trickling down across, um, just to make sure that the girls are comfortable, no matter if you play a sport or not. Yep. Um, and have we had any former pro athletes come to speak to the girls? You know, we have an Olympian parent who uh, has come to speak as girls. Actually, it's really sweet as those uh, fourth graders still dress up, right? The notable women. And I think uh, one of them dressed up like one of, like this parent. Uh, we also had um, a parent, a, a ten, our tennis players seem to be very connected. Uh, we had a famous par parent tennis player who, um, uh, kind of connected it. And I think many of our, our our tennis players got to meet Billie Jean King and got to meet Serena Williams and got to meet a lot of, of, of folks like that. So I think opportunities um, evolve and happen sometimes um, intentionally and sometimes we're just in the right place at the right time with the right parent who knows somebody. Um, but certainly we've had quite a few folks, uh, mostly women athletes come in and speak to women, uh, to our young girls, uh, which is great. Um, so if you know anybody on this call and anybody has any connections, uh, let us know <laughs> because we're all into trying to create more authentic opportunities. And oftentimes they come 
uh, through alums uh, who want uh, ha help us reach out uh, to folks. So yes, the, my email is fbasell at hb.edu. So, uh, and Stacy's is saroni at hb.edu. I think everybody's around town here is your first initial, your last name at hb.edu. So you can get in touch with all of us. And crack the code of, of reaching out to all of the, all of the administrators. Um, uh, oh, good question. What are the regulations for public using the outdoor fields and courts? You know, um, one of the things we've been trying to do um, as a girls school, this is a really interesting question. We love the fact that we're a big family and we want everybody to use our stuff. Our insurance company doesn't quite like that all the time. Uh, we also know that renting turf fields as they are close to each other is a really amazing source of, of um, supplemental income that can go back into caring for those fields that can go into developmental athletics or uh, athletic opportunities. And um, I think um, gone are the days where you can just pop on and into the tennis courts and use them. Um, we The damage we have had with the uh, couple kids on rollerblades a couple times makes us less likely to just have it be a free for all. Um, so I would say that, yeah, yes, we, you know, we want to figure out a way to have people use our, our facilities respectfully. We want to maximize um, alternative sources of revenue to enhance our athletic opportunities. Um, but it's probably, it, there probably will not be a day in the near future where you can just show up at school and play tennis. Uh, you'd probably have to call somebody and get permission and, and things like that. And I think that's just right now. The other thing is, you know, HB as a girls' school, we have a higher level of security um, for good reason. And, um, you know, we now have cameras literally all over campus. You can't just show up and be anonymous here because we know that's actually our number one job is to keep our girls safe. And so what we kind of err on the side of safety rather than access. Um, I had a, a professor once that say that says you can have, you know, uh, security or accessibility. You can't, you can't really have both and you sacrifice efficiency to get more security. So I think that we're, we're in that zone of, of things. Um, but I will say what's really exciting is that um, with Light the Night, an incredible parent celebration that was early childhood through grade 12. There were about a thousand people from the HB community having a fabulous time on all the turfs with games with the girls. And it was a beautiful night outside. Um, everybody was spread out, which is exactly what you want with COVID. And um, it was really, it, it, I think the, the fields really enhanced um, our celebrated community, which, um, I think it's a real, it, it was a little popcorn to, I know Stacy had to clean up the popcorn on the field. I get that. No more popcorn. <laughs> no more popcorn will be served at late the nights. But if we looked at the high, the highest level, it was just a great night. So. Um, and uh, actually there is a Peloton group. And when I, I, I need to look, I put the hashtag in on my Peloton. So when I, I'll go home tonight and I, when I find it out, I will email it to you because I know there is one, because there's at least a faculty group chat for Peloton. So I know that there is a hashtag, but honestly, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I will email it to you. Wait, that is so cool. Nobody told me about that. There's right. a, there's right, an Katie, entry. You gotta get a Peloton. I, <laughs> clearly, stop going on the road and visiting alums, get a Peloton. Get a Peloton. <laughs> that's awesome. What, that's, the, that's the best. Elizabeth yeah. Falco and you're and you're uh, building this national network of powerful HB women pelotoning <laughs> for life. Uh, that's awesome. I think that's really cool. That's great. Um, other opportunities, Elizabeth, I think, you know, once we leave this pandemic situation, I would love to be able to explore some of those options. Um, like I said, right now, we're in just a weird, such a weird spot where we're half normal, but half not. And um, you know, I think there would probably be some concern until vaccines are really rolled out and people that are comfortable to get them or are able to get them. Um, but yeah, it'd be definitely something I'm, I'd be willing to explore. Yeah. Well, this has been terrific and I'm so grateful for everyone's time and, uh, Stacey, you are doing a terrific job and I'm so, uh, 
proud of all the work that has been done with both our facilities, our you know uh, philosophy in action, uh, creating a community of coaches, uh, harnessing the spirit of the voices of the girls and authentic salt leadership opportunities. Um, HB Athletics is in a great place uh, and I'm so grateful for your leadership. So Thank thanks you. everyone for joining today. Thank you, Tina, for setting this up. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We look forward to more 40 Minutes with Fran. I don't know when. I think there's another one uh, maybe in early January. So take care, everyone. Thank you.